for those who are OG OG Dapper Squad members, you, some of you guys might know that the first ever video I ever did on my original Dapper Darius channel that got deleted was My Hero Academia Season 2, like episode 18, 19, right around the stain arc. So the fact that we're still here in 2021, me watching My Hero Academia Season 5 with you guys while wearing a fresh ass Dabby shirt, I just never would have thought this happened. Like, this feels great, you guys. What's up? <laughs> Good to see you. What's up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with My Hero Academia. It does feel great to say that. Season 5, episode 0, I'm pretty sure this is. Because I'm pretty sure this is that one non-manga canon original episode they always put in to kind of get you back into the My Hero. Show some recaps of the last season. You know, the last episode, I, the last episode they did this at the beginning of season four, I thought was really good with the camera journalist, with the whole picture camera quirk thing. I really, really, really enjoyed that episode. I did recently rewatch all of my hero seasons one through four, like a month and a half, two months ago. I did watch the entire thing in the dub though because i wanted to get a good feeling as to what the dub was if you guys want to actually know i think i watched all of the normies reaction to it because i've seen all of my heroes or blind waves reaction to my hero like a long long time ago so i watched the normies one fantastic reactions a fantastic dub i was super surprised that but you know, i'm just super excited for this episode like i said probably going to be a recap just getting us back into these characters back into the vibe next episode we're going to be starting i do know uh, I'm pretty sure that this first part, like episodes 1 through 10, 1 through 12, because it's going to be 25 episodes, is going to be this maybe training class A versus class B type arc, which I'm excited about. As you guys are well aware, I love training arcs, all about the training arcs. So I say we just hop right onto this episode. No more jibber jabber. I am super excited. Now, if you guys are unaware, for the first and last episode of every season of every show we watch on the channel, the full length, which is normally only available on Patreon, is available for everyone for free. So click that link at the top of the description. Enjoy that full length. If you guys enjoy that format and want to consider keeping it for the future, maybe consider checking out the Patreon. Links are always available for you guys. On the other shows that aren't live coming out weekly, we are four episodes ahead on, like Jujutsu Kaisen, Black Clover, Haikyuu many many more to come don't forget to follow me on all my social medias instagram twitch and twitter at dapper darius subscribe if you guys currently are not click that bell so you guys always know when i post let's hop right on into this my hero academia season five episode zero is what i'm gonna call it because i'm pretty sure it is uh, all hands on deck class 1a let's do it is it not gonna start with a deku monologue about how he became the best superhero of all time this is the day after the last episode. <laughs> Don't even take me back, bro. That episode was fan-fucking-tastic. Oh my god. The moment he says, I always hated the school motto, but it feels appropriate, <laughs> I fucking get a boner every time. This man is a fucking gangster. Hawks, don't even get me started. AKA Gojo fucking Sensei. My guy. Talk about character development, man. He wants to be a man not only fucking Todoroki is proud of as the number one hero, but also his father. Burn up and be put to rest his old self. Gives me goosebumps just re-watching it, bro. Oh my god. Bro. <laughs> oh my god. I'm telling you, that makes me want to rewatch that whole episode already again. So manly. <laughs> yeah, he's probably going over a lot mentally when it comes to his dad, you know. Especially with I, I, I loved, even though that was last season, I probably talked about it last season. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've seen my own videos about it, but I loved the whole aspect of his other siblings and his mom talking about how complicated Endeavor is as an individual because it, it's so deep when it comes to trying to become number one for so long to the point where it drives you insane to the point where you you know you hurt everyone around you in order to, but it's impossible he doesn't even realize at the time that that power was cultivated and it was really over generations and it was nothing he could have really you know it's like it's such a sad story but so realistic in certain aspects but I love how his mom um, Todoroki's mom was like, he's such a complicated man. He obviously visited me, even though I never saw him. He dropped off these flowers, which were the flowers that I told him I loved on our first date, something along those lines. 
and how you can tell how much of Endeavor is in the children based off the amount of hair. Like his older sister was, I think, the firstborn between the both of them. And I think the older brother was just born of the mother. Maybe I don't I don't maybe it was just the, the gene pool wasn't super good right there. But it's just like I love how complicated he is. Like for someone who seems to be so black and white, evil, douchebaggy, Endeavor's easily one of the most complicated characters in this show. Emergency drill. Okay. Hypothetical villains. Some of the classmates in 1A probably have PTSD. Like, villains again? Oh, it's been a long time since I heard this song. My hero is amazing with the music. Always. Oh, here's the monologue we're always used to by Deku. I've heard the new movie that they're going to announce is going to be fire with Bakugo, Deku, and Todoroki. I've heard it's going to be amazing. All hands on deck, class 1A. I love this song too, bro. Now it's going to be a little hard for me to remember all the names, so I'm definitely going to try Coda. And I'm glad they do this every time. Shoji, right? Tentacool. I love how they all have their hero names and everything, man. Earphone Jack, Tentacool. So they're the Recognizance Squad. I love how they split off into units. They know their own the limits of their own abilities and shit. Sue. Yep, Mineta Sue. Sue's always, when it comes to river, water, get Sue over there. They got a fucking car? Choto Todoroki! Or as his nickname likes to say, Icy Hot Bastard. <laughs> he's definitely just, he's doing just the acting, you know? He's just playing along, but it's so funny. My boy Mirio. He technically is a human with no quirk. He's technically in danger. Okuyami, that's my boy. I love his hero name, Sukuyomi, the jet black hero. Grape juice. Oh, that's that's cool. Make sure everything is secure, say. Brappy, one of my favorite of the hero names. I wonder who the faux villains are gonna be. It's gonna be one of the staff, right? All right, float him up. My girl, Ochako, Uraraka, Uravity, great name. I'm so thankful for these recap episodes. They reintroduced me to everyone. One of the most underrated classmates, Sero. Aoyama, my boy, can't stop twinkling. <laughs> twinkling can't be stopped. Oh, uh, Nejire. Nejire Hado. She, her using her Surge quirk. She's gonna be the faux villain. We got the big three all just playing actors helping us out. There's another. Is it gonna be Tamaki? Oh, Sun Eater. My, ew, he's my boy. I love fucking Sun Eater. <laughs> my boy. Damn, that's a big surge. She uses her own energy, like her life energy. <laughs> oh, so you gotta... <laughs> He's playing his part so hilariously. I love Mirio. I love some of the decision making behind some of these students. Oh, 
They even show the sweat thing for Invisible Girl too. Oh, look at his little face. Is <laughs> oh my, I love Mirio. Help, ask we can help out. Hell yeah, Mirio ass, you gotta do it, bro. When Tamaki had that spot in episode uh, season four, when he did the Chimera Kraken, that was one of the coolest fucking moments ever. I swear to God. Oh, smart. Invisible girl's off there for the save. Nice. The reflected light is such a cool special move for her. Ooh, smart. Nice, Saro. With the um, with the net made by Momo. Good shit. And then fucking Ojiro behind you. What are you gonna do? Tailman's on the move. Ooh. Idoria Izuku. Okay, he. I thought he was gonna actually sock him, but he was just like, oh. he didn't want to be serious. He didn't want to injure you. Very good point, though. Tamaki's going serious. Hey, man, whatever you do to make them proper heroes, this ain't a game. You gotta treat this like it's serious. I get him. Not with Kirishima explosive defense car red. <laughs> Bro, Tamaki, Kirishima, Fat Gum, my favorite combo. Let me see Fat Gum again, bro. That's my fucking dude. Are they even old enough to drive? He hotwired it. <laughs> With his mouth keeping the electricity going? Jesus. Typical Bakugo. Bakugo, relax. Look at this man. He blew up goddamn everybody. <laughs> <laughs> with the greatest afros oh my man i didn't even recognize him without his fire facial hair like literally fire facial hair he used his left arm hey differentiate yourself in any way you can What is Dabby doing here? Dabby was in charge of the last Nomu too at the at the summer camp. So that confirms that Dabby's not his son, because that's a big theory for fucking years at this point. He said it's our first time meeting. Don't tell me it's Hawks. I'm fucking pissed. I'm fucking pissed. I am pissed. I can already tell you from just that after credit scene right there that this season, this, especially the first part of the season, is going to be one of those ones where we have our kids doing a bunch of kids stuff, doing amazing, getting better at being heroes stuff. I'm, I'm super down for. But in the background, same thing as season four, they're going to be laying the groundwork for the shit that's going to come in the second part of the season. That shit's going to pop off. I can literally already feel it and I love it so much. My hero, for even being a recap episode, bro, you guys got me way too hype. Shout out to you guys. Hopefully Do Toho doesn't claim this like they do every other thing Toho does, but I love you guys. Come on, don't do me like that. But I love how in a drill, even though it's purely a hypothetical drill, not real, they take it serious enough as if it were a real mission. They call each other by their hero names. They do everything they should. Even if it's rash, they, they, they sit back and think about it. Like Jiro was like, I want to get in there. I want to do more. But but uh, Shoji was like, no, we are the recognizance. Hey, in case there's any extra villains, we have to stay here. We'd be the first line of information defense for our people. We have to do what we have to do and like in a real life situation where you're playing the support role for everyone else like even Sato was like oh man Todoroki took all the the glory you know but it's like 
when you're an actual hero out there doing actual heroic things, you have to balance between personal standings and showing off like Mount Lady likes to do or saving the people. You know, like that's why Eraserhead is so predominant at working in the underground. He does all of his shit out of media coverage, you know, so he's I love him for that. But then you have All Might who has to save everyone with a smile. You know, it's just such different ways of doing your job. I love how we can easily I can see them developing that as like I, I love how literally from season one till now I can see each individual character's heroicness evolving and at, at their own different rate and different aspects I need to help work on and that are amazing for them you know it's like some are already excelling in the mental aspects of being a hero some of them are exceeding like, the physical like Bakugo Todoroki great examples of people who need a little bit more of a mindset change a little bit more of a mentality change that's why they failed the prelim that's why they failed the uh, licensing exams you know like they got into arguments they were beefing with the actors you know but when it comes to the physical side they are superheroes they are s tier heroes so it's like there's so much more that goes into this versus having just a strong quirk and i love that aspect and i love how they know like it was even said during season four it's like the best, the most proficient way of dealing with these kind of situations is knowing the limits of your own individual powers, what you can and cannot do, and fitting that, fitting that puzzle piece that you have into the equation perfectly. That's really the best way of doing it. I always thought it was kind of weird last season when Hawks and Endeavor are literally just casually sitting down, and then Anomu comes out of nowhere to attack right when they're sitting, right when he's like, yo, I have this super in super crazy information going down about the nomus and about some deeper shit so it's like i don't know man i hope he's good i hope he's not bad he's he's the youngest pro to ever have his own agency right and he's meeting up with dabby who dabby how did dabby even get out of the situation in the street when he just saw endeavor and hawks that he, uh, dabby is crazy bro he is crazy because when it came to the summer camp last oh and that wasn't even season four holy shit that was season three um when it came to that summer camp he was the one in charge of the nomu right that they sent because it was him and twice with the chainsaw nomu or what was the guy's name i swear i have it written down it was momo and awase awase was the one who put the tracker on that which led momo to the warehouse where they had the whole all might versus all for one um thing damn that was all season three. That's crazy. So I wonder if Dabby was in control of this Nomu. I wonder what's going on with Dabby. Uh, see, the fan theory that Dabby is Endeavor's son is so unique to me because obviously there's no hardcore evidence that it's true. He did say this is our first time meeting, but he also has fire powers just like Endeavor. He has blue flames, which Endeavor has been able to do before. He said, yo, Endeavor, like he like he's, he's saying it like there's a history, even though he's saying there's no history. He's saying it like there's a history. And then in season three, when they're capturing Bakugo, he, he says to Todoroki, he says, oh, poor Toto, Shoto, uh, poor Shoto Todoroki. I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, and I, I I haven't obviously spoiled myself, but I've been told that in the manga, Dabby is fucking wild. Like Dabby is fucking he's lit. Like no pun intended, he's fucking fire. So you know, I, it's just, it's it's fate that I wore this. I had no I literally had no idea Dabby would even play a part in this episode. I thought it was purely recap, but I was like, let's wear my fire Dabby shirt. I just got it. Why not? It worked out. It worked out. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down below. Uh, also, real quick, do um, you guys want to tell me a little bit about the movies? Because I, it, if I'm correct, there's two movies that are out right now and a third movie that's coming out. Or are there... I know there's the movie that takes place between with David Shield that I still haven't seen, by the way. I definitely plan on watching that. I'm starting movie reactions of the next month. If this goes up today, it should be a couple weeks and you guys might see your first movie reaction on the channel. But... Uh, that movie takes place between seasons two well that's like a prequel but like you get the little part for that like that's after season three right and then the new movie takes place in between the two parts of season five i don't know if you guys could explain that to me i don't want to mess up my timeline when it comes to these movies at all but i definitely plan on doing them very soon that's the only reason i'm asking you hopefully you guys enjoyed leave a like let me know your thoughts i'll catch you on this next episode next week guys peace out fantastic time